In this session, we'll explore a few ways to add decorations, like windows and doors, to a 3D building in Formant. Let me mention that this session represents part two of a three-part series. As you can see, we are picking up where we left off in the last session. Just for a second, I'm going to jump over to Google Earth Street View so we can take a look at our goal for this session. Right here, to the right side of the tallest part of the building, I have a door. And then to the right of this door, we have eight windows. To the left of the door, we have two larger windows. Now, to help control the length of this video, I'm not going to be modeling every door and window on this building. What I'll do is walk you through the workflows to create a few of them, with the understanding that the concepts that we learn would simply be repeated to finish up the others. So, let's jump back over to Form It. I will then hold the right mouse button down to orbit, and I will roll the wheel forward to zoom in, and we'll create a door. Now, the door is a rectangular shape, so I'm going to come up to the Draw Tools, and I will launch the Rectangle command. When you create a rectangle in Formit, it will generate that rectangle along the plane that your cursor happens to be over at the time. For instance, if I hover here, you can see I'll be creating the rectangle on the work plane. If I hover here, we'll see that the rectangle will be created on this face. I'm going to pull down until the bottom of the rectangle is even with the bottom edge of the building, and I will click. We'll pull this door over, tab, three feet, and then I will pull up, tab, we'll make this 7.5 feet, enter. Let me press escape when finished. So I've created my door. Now when I placed that, it wasn't really placed to any measurement along the building. Let's say I'd like this door to be positioned two feet to the right of this edge of the building extended. I can do that using the measure tool. First I'm going to select the face that represents the door. I'll come up and launch the measure command. I will then hover over this corner of the building to acquire that, and then I will pull this down until it meets the bottom edge, and I'll click and then I'll create my dimension, the left side of this door. Right there we can see the actual measurement. If I select that measurement, I can change this to be whatever I want. In my case, I want it to be two. Let me press enter, and I'll press escape when finished. As you can see, very easy to move this geometry. Let's zoom in. So I moved the door itself. What if I wanted the door to be twice as wide? Instead of selecting the entire face, I will simply select an edge. Once I select the edge, I will launch the measure command, and I will create a measurement to that edge. I will then click the dimension, and I'll set this to 6. Let's put things back the way they were. I'll select the dimension again, and I'll put this back to 3. And I'll press escape a couple times to get out of the command. Let's zoom out. I'll hold the mouse wheel down to pan, and we'll create a window. The window will be a rectangle as well. Let me go back to the draw menu. I'll launch the rectangle command. And I'm going to place my lower left corner right here. Let's make this window 6.5 feet wide, and then I will pull this up, and I estimated these were 6.5 feet tall. I'll press escape a couple times when finished. As I look at this window, it seems a touch high. I'd like to move it down, but I don't necessarily want to use a specific measurement. Let me show you another way to move this geometry. I'm going to select this first edge. I'll hold the shift key and select this one, and this one, and this one. When all the edges are selected, I can then click on an edge, endpoint, or midpoint, and then I can drag this window up and down along the z-axis, or left and right along the x-axis. I just want to be careful that I don't drag the window in the y-axis direction. For now, I'm just going to pull this down about a foot, and I'll click. When I'm finished, I'll press escape. Now, I need eight of these windows. What I'll do is select this face, I'll right-click, and in the contextual menu, I'll choose Array. Note that we can define the array using total length or length between copies. I'm going to go with the default here of total length. We can create a linear or radial array. I'm going to choose linear. I can group each solid and then array. Now in Formit, groups are a lot like AutoCAD blocks. I don't want to turn these windows into blocks, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. Finally, how many copies do I want? The default here happens to be perfect, seven. I would like seven copies, and then with my original, that would make eight windows. Let me click OK. I will then select this window, and I will pull to the right. Let's zoom out, and I will pull this along the x-axis to fill up my building, and I'll click. When I'm finished, I'll press escape a couple times. Now that I've defined my windows, I'd like to push these in slightly to create an indentation so everything's not perfectly flat along this face. One way I can do that is by clicking to select the face. I could click again, and I could push this window in or pull it out. Let me press escape. I could also select a multiple. If I click one of these, I could hold my shift key and I could grab another and another. And then I can click and I can push these in or pull them out. Let me press escape. Let's look at an even faster way. If I hover over a window and tap the tab key, 
Formit will select all objects that are similar to the one that I'm hovering over. This is actually perfect. Let me click to select these. I will then click again. I'll push in and we will push these in six inches and I'll press enter. Let me press escape to deselect. We'll push the door in as well. Let me go ahead and click. I'll click again and I'll push this in. I'll tap tab and we'll make this six inches and I'll press escape. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to create a quick awning. Now we don't need an awning on this side of the building, but there is one that we'll see on the other side in just a little bit. Let me show you how that would be created. I'm going to open the draw menu and I'll create another rectangle. I could then simply define my rectangle representing the size of that awning. I'll press escape. I can then click this face, click again to pull it out, whatever my distance is. I'll click, let me press escape, and then I could simply select this edge, click to select it again, and I could push it down to create the shape of the awning. Now in this case, I don't need an awning on this side of the building, so I'm going to hit my undo button here a couple times to take that away. Let's back up. Using the workflows that we've just seen, we have enough tools to finalize this building. When finished, it would look something like this. As you can see, my remaining windows and doors are in. I've created some additional geometry that I've extruded up to create these shapes. Let me orbit this around. And on the back side, we can see that awning that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Let's orbit this back, and I'll center the model on screen. Now that the basic geometry of our building is complete, we are ready to start adding photorealistic materials, and we'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.